Hello to all my brothers and sisters at St. Francis Xavier Cabrini. I want to begin by telling you how much I miss seeing you all here at Mass. I, I hope that as many of us begin our seventh week in self-quarantine, that, that you and your families are all healthy and happy. These have been challenging days for us, and I'm sure I don't need to tell you that. The many changes that the pandemic has forced on us have been a real struggle. And facing all these trials without the ability to be together as a faith community has made it seem even harder for us. But there is always hope. I'm reminded of words from Psalm 42. Why are you cast down, my soul? Why groan within me? Hope in God. I will praise him still, my Savior and my God. And I urge you all to never lose sight of that hope. Know in your minds and in your hearts that we are walking through this strange journey by the side of our loving Jesus. Hold that hope deep inside you. So let's now begin. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said, Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever does not enter a sheepfold through the gate but climbs over elsewhere is a thief and a robber. But whoever enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens it for him, and the sheep hear his voice as the shepherd calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has driven out all his own, he walks ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they recognize his voice. But they will not follow a stranger. They will run away from him because they do not recognize the voice of strangers. Although Jesus used this figure of speech, the Pharisees did not realize what he was trying to tell them. So Jesus said again, Amen, amen, I say to you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. A thief comes only to steal and slaughter and destroy. I came so they might have life and have it more abundantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, today, and especially this day, Good Shepherd Sunday, I am relieved to know that I have someone watching after me. You know, as we heard St. Thomas confirm a couple of weeks ago, my Lord and my God, yeah, my life's guide, my protector, my good shepherd. This great image of Jesus as the Good Shepherd is one that's captured the Christian imagination for 2,000 years. And one of the most beautiful depictions of Jesus from the early centuries is a statue of a young beardless man holding a sheep over his shoulders. That's an image, of course, which has come out of the rural culture of the first century and one that the ancient Israelites would have been very familiar with. To the people who were his first followers, this image would have been perfectly natural. Shepherds guarded, guided, protected, and watched over their flocks, just as God guides, guards, and protects and watches over us and Israel. A shepherd is the most important person in the lives of the sheep. By nature, sheep are not the brightest of God's creations. They, they lose their way very easily. They have no sense of direction. They always seem to be looking down and don't seem to care at all about their own welfare. If they're not shown where to pasture, they may die for lack of food. And if they fall into a ditch, they're not resourceful enough to free themselves. If they get hurt, they don't heal quickly and they need a lot of care. Without a shepherd, they're doomed. God uses this imagery to show us how careless we can be, how materialistic we are, that we prefer to look down toward things of the world instead of looking up into the spiritual world offered by the Good Shepherd. Without the Holy Spirit, we behave like dumb sheep. We tend to forget that we're made in the image of God. Now, what exactly makes Jesus the Good Shepherd? The Good Shepherd is so caring, so devoted to his sheep that he's willing to surrender his life that they might live. Now, this sounds nice at first glance, but the more you think about it, the stranger it becomes. Sure, a Good Shepherd should do all that he can to protect and guide his flock, but who among us would really expect him to give his life for them? 
Suppose a pack of wolves descended on the flock. Would we really expect the shepherd to throw himself in the front of the ravenous creatures in order to protect a sheep? At the most, we might expect him to give his life for his human family, for other human beings maybe, but perhaps not for animals. But this is exactly what Jesus says he will do. Now imagine the difference between humans and sheep. Now multiply that difference indefinitely. That will give you an idea of the difference between God and humanity. And yet God is willing to lay down his life for all of us, despite our sins. We recall all that the Good Shepherd does for us as it is told in the 23rd 23rd Psalm. He restores our souls. He guides us along right paths. He walks us through the valley of the shadow of death. He comforts us. He sets a table before us and causes our cup to overflow. I'm so assured and relieved to be in his care. Now the second reading gives us further consolation. Remember these words. For you had gone astray like sheep, but you have now returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. What more loving image of God do we need? Jesus' self-characterization in saying, I am the good shepherd, is only the fourth of his I am statements. I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the gate. I am the true vine. I am the door. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Each one of these gives us clues as to who he is to us, but why is it that his love for us is so deep, so great, simple. It's because of his very nature. God is love. Not God has love. Not that God loves us. It's that he is love itself. It is his very being. It's who he is. And we are his children. He can't stop loving us. Remember the ideas expressed in John 3.16 that he loves us so much that he asked his son to leave his heavenly home take on human form, and, like a good shepherd, lay down his life for us. And so now, in the midst of all the fear and confusion we're enduring, and enduring without the capability of being together as a flock, without being able to receive him sacramentally, we pray, good and gracious God, gather together your sheep. Those who are lost, search out. Those who have strayed, bring back. Those who are injured, bind their wounds. Those who are sick, cure. Those bearing young, watch over them. All of your sheep, keep them safe in your flock. And we ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you all in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.